Living frugal involves a complete shift in the way we use our resources, which can not only help us save money, but also be less wasteful. If you ask different people what it means to be frugal, you might not get the same responses because everybody can approach it differently. But there are a few traits that you'll see often among some of the most frugal people. So if you're trying to shift your mindset and become a little bit more thrifty, these are a few habits to start working on. So the first habit is to be frugal with your time. Saving money and spending less is a big part of thriftiness, but your money isn't the only thing to monitor. It's also beneficial to monitor to your time and make good use of it. Now we've all heard the phrase time is money and this can mean different things to different people with some people viewing time as a valuable commodity. But no matter how you interpret this saying, being frugal with both your resources and your time can have a positive impact on your finances. There's always something you could be doing and depending on your circle, you might frequently receive invitations to dine out, go to the movies, to travel or to participate in some other form of entertainment. But although balance is important and you should have fun, entertainment and recreation can get out of control fast and kill your budget. Now, I'm not saying that you should sit at home or only have fun if it's a free activity. But what I am saying is that it is okay to prioritize things that are important to you. And it's also okay to say no if you prefer not spending your time on something. Because choosing to spend less time on the things that don't matter as much to you means that you'll have more time and money to spend on the things that do matter. Number two, be low maintenance. And to be completely clear, this does not mean that you can't get your hair done or your nails done or buy expensive things. But one thing we need to understand is that there is a difference between self-care and placing such a strong emphasis on appearances to the point where you might spend excessive amounts of money on clothes and products to keep at a current level. That type of mindset is not cheap and high maintenance people tend to spend more and save less, especially if they really can't afford the upkeep. Number three, be proactive with money and think long-term. To be a frugal person, you also have to take action. And one action is being a good money manager. We are ultimately responsible for our own financial choices. So the way we approach money can either help us save or prevent us from saving. And being proactive, of course, it involves the obvious, such as budgeting, tracking your spending, and paying yourself first. And creating a plan is so important because it's the best way to really see where your money goes throughout the month and it can also reveal areas where you're currently overspending so that you can make the necessary adjustments that will allow you to save even more. But being proactive doesn't stop here. It can also involve being creative with how you save money. For example, shopping around for insurance or financing, negotiating credit card rates, and even asking for discounts. And these efforts can seem minor or not appear to make a big difference, but over time, they can improve your bottom line. Number four is don't be wasteful and use every drop. I am so guilty of this. Whenever my shampoo or lotion gets a little low, I have a bad habit of tossing the bottle aside, going out and buying a new one, even though there is plenty of product left in the old bottle. I've done this with lotion, shampoo, toothpaste, conditioner, pretty much anything that comes in a bottle or tube. And it really goes back to not wanting to be inconvenienced. But let me tell you, just because a product doesn't easily squeeze out of a bottle or tube, doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of product left in there. And if you grab a pair of scissors and cut open a tube or bottle, you can get several more uses out of an item and be less wasteful. I keep these little travel size toiletry bottles around and if the shower gel gets too low where it's difficult to squeeze I'll cut it open and scoop out the gel into one of these containers and continue to use it number five is to be patient now I know this probably goes without saying but I cannot do a video on frugal habits without mentioning patience because I do feel that this trait really separates a frugal person from a non frugal person I don't want to generalize a whole group but for the most part, highly frugal people, they have really mastered the art of delaying instant gratification so they don't have to have everything now. Just about everything at some point goes on sale and waiting a few weeks can make a big difference regarding price. A frugal, resourceful person, they know this and they rarely pay full price 
because oftentimes there's no reason to. And not only do they wait for prices to drop, they also take time to comparison shop to make sure they're getting a good price. Or they might even use a 24 or 48 hour rule, which is basically sleeping on the idea of buying something before actually making the purchase. And that is so effective because a lot of times, once an item is out of sight, it does become out of mind. The next tip is to become a DIY pro. Now, when it comes to home improvement projects, you have to know your limitations. And yes, sometimes it does make sense to hire a professional because if you tackle a project and you don't know what you're doing, you could end up spending more in the long run. But with that said, don't automatically assume that you can't do something. Many home projects are doable even without experience. And keep in mind, you have one of the best libraries of how-to guides at your fingertips. This platform has so many step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do multiple projects for inside and outside the house. And the final tip is to buy things that last, which is a hallmark of developing a frugal mindset and saving money long-term. Because always going for the rock bottom price and not caring anything about quality could end up costing you more in the long run. Now this doesn't mean that you should pay a lot for every single thing or that you should get into debt to buy quality items. But if you can afford to pay more for something, especially something that might last two or three times longer than a cheaper version, if possible, consider saving up and choosing quality over price. This is a mistake that I used to make all the time. And just to give you a quick example, I recently decided to finally fork over the cash to buy myself a quality flat iron. My hair is thick and a lot of the hair tools that I bought in the past didn't always get the job done. But instead of just going out and buying what I needed, I continued to buy other cheap brands, hoping to find something that actually worked. And as you can probably imagine, I ended up spending a lot of money. But once I actually purchased what I needed, problem solved. And had I just went ahead and did that in the first place, I probably could have saved a lot of money. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. Here we talk a lot about personal finance, different ways that you can save money and fix your wallet. So if you like videos like this, I do post every weekend and sometimes during the week. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days.